The Saskatchewan woman is taking the next step in raising awareness for missing and murdered Indigenous women with a walk across the country, and on Monday she arrived in Lloydminster. Krista Fox is a 53-year-old woman from North Battleford, and on February 18th, Krista's kilometers began in Victoria, and shortly after, she made her way to the Highway of Tears in British Columbia, which has been the location of many missing and murdered Indigenous women. However, Fox has a personal tie to the cause. September 9th, 2020, my 14-year-old grandson was murdered. Uh, it took me for quite a turn. Uh, to get through all the emotions of all of that. In March of last year, I decided I needed to do something. I needed to do more. On Monday, Krista reached Blackfoot and started the latest leg of her walk to Lloydminster. Once she arrived in the border city, she was greeted by local officials, as well as drummers and singers from Onion Lake Cree Nation. <laughs> Fox also met with Heart of Treaty 6 Reconciliation members who shared their stories and touched on the importance of her project. She wants to inspire people to do more. Start looking for those missing persons posters and share them on your social media. You know, get the word out there. These families are hurting. And the best thing that people can do as a community is lift them up. She will be continuing her walk across the country with the next stop in her hometown, North Battleford. For Krista, the next step forward in this project is awareness. Just keep spreading awareness. Missing and murdered Indigenous people, men, women, children, boys, girls, two-spirit, everybody, you know, just keep sharing. We need to bring them all home and stop the genocide to our people. Registration for Big Brothers Big Sisters of Lloydminster's Activity Challenge fundraiser is open. Our Nicole Gruber spoke with them for more. Today for Primetime Local News, I'm joined with Jacqueline Weed with the Big Brothers Big Sisters of Lloydminster to talk about registration opening up for their Activity Challenge fundraiser coming up. So thank you so much, Jacqueline, for joining us here today. Oh, you're welcome. We do them all the time, so I'm used to it. <laughs> So first off, do you mind letting us know what this activities challenge is all about? Okay, so um, for the last, I would say about 15 years, we did a major fundraiser in the spring called Bowl for Kids. And uh, when COVID hit, we could no longer do that. So because the bowling alley was closed and the restrictions and stuff, but we still needed to find something to raise funds for the agency. So Last year, we came up with the activity challenge. It was the 50th anniversary of Big Brothers in Lloydminster. So we called it the 50, min 50 years for 50 minutes um, activity challenge. And what it meant was that people would sign up to do any activity that you want to do for 50 minutes and you collect pledges. And that's how we raised money. And we could do corporate sponsorship as well. And actually, it went very well last year. We had businesses that um, everyone paid money for their pledges and then they went for a walk as a group at lunch hour. So it's really easy to do and that's why we picked it. So we, we're gonna continue with it as a, as a yearly thing. So this year, our activity challenge is taking place between May 6th and May 17th. And so people pick the day that works for them to do their activity. They register with us, tell us what their activity is going to be. So, I mean, it could be if they do a regular workout at the gym. It could be if they're weeding the garden or doing yard work. It could be going for a walk, walking the dog. It could be something more structured if they play organized sports. So it's really pretty flexible with what the activity is. And then they just get people to give them pledges. Um, and that's how we raise the money from the team participation. And then we also are taking corporate sponsorships for it. And can you give us a little bit more detail on what a pledge is? So a pledge is just, I would go, if I was in it, I would go to my family and say, I'm taking part in this. Um, would you like to sponsor me? So then they might give me $10, they might give me $20. Um, and then I just, I set a fundraising goal for myself and raise as much money as I can, and then it goes to Big Brothers Big Sisters. And how can people go about participating in this? They can register individually, so if they want to just do it by themselves, or their family, their business, a group of friends, and they just need to get in touch with us and let us know what it is that they're going to be doing and what day, 
and then we can get them the rest of the information that they need for it. And where can people find more information about this activities challenge? They could call or message our Facebook page. Um, either way, we're, we're, we're within reach. It's pretty easy. Um, they could, yeah, that's probably the easiest way. The website might have some information, but it's not as direct of a contact. So if they call the agency or message our Facebook page, we'll be able to get them started. And where will this fundraising be going towards? Uh, just towards our mentoring programs in the agency. We raise almost 50% of our um, operating budget by doing things in the community. So this is a huge piece of that fundraising for us. So it'll be just supporting our mentoring programs that are going on. And you had mentioned it's an activities challenge. So is there specific activities that people need to do or can people just do whatever they want to do for that? Whatever they like. And that's why we found it, uh, it appealed to so many people because if depending on what your activity level is, your mobility, level it's really up to them what the activity is that they take part in you could jump on the trampoline and you know and collect pledges so it's really wide open and how do you feel that this fundraiser will help the community uh just it gives us the um support to recruit mentors do the screening and training and the matching and support the matches that we have in the agency so every little bit adds up and is there anything else that you would like to add or mention about this fundraiser um, it, again, you know, people can can sponsor themselves, they can do it individually, do it as a family. We're really pretty flexible on how they would like to take part. And the community always comes out and supports us in a huge way. So we're just looking forward to, to seeing what activities people pick this year. Well, thank you so much again, Jacqueline, for joining us here today. Thank you so much. Now to take a look at today's sunny weather, we go to Shelby Clark. Thanks so much, Jasmine. Yes, we saw a beautiful day today, and you know, I think everybody's really happy to see that, especially after some of the snowfall we got yesterday. You know, it was snowing for quite a bit, but the sun has already melted down most of that snow we've gotten, so I think it's really nice today, and we are sitting at that two-degree point with still sunnier skies, so hopefully this will continue on through the rest of the week, even though we will be seeing another high chance of some snowfall once again. Now switching over to temperatures across the region for Alberta and Saskatchewan. On the Alberta side, most spots are seeing around two degrees right now, but they are still seeing those plus temperatures. Five in Lac La Biche, as well as down in Wainwright and Provost. Edmonton is seeing the warmest, just hitting that six degree mark, and St. Paul is just seeing zero. Now switching over to our Saskatchewan side here, they are seeing those single digit temps as well, but on the plus side, uh, most spots are seeing that two degree point as well. One in Green Lake and down in North Balfour, while St. Walbert is just hitting zero. Three in Pearsland as well as down in Macklin. And for North Balfour, even though they are sitting at that one degree point, they will be cooling down to minus 10, so they will be cooling down quite a bit. Uh, they will be seeing some cloudier skies throughout the night and then tomorrow they will be seeing a beautiful day at that four degree point and they will be seeing a mix of some sun and cloud. Switching now to Cold Lake, they'll be cooling down to minus six. So they won't be cooling down too bad whatsoever for their evening low. Then tomorrow they will be seeing seven degrees, so they will be warming up pretty, pretty, uh, pretty highly from that two degree point today, but they will be seeing some cloudier skies. And switching now to the border city, we'll be cooling down to minus six as well for our, uh, our evening low. And then tomorrow we will be seeing five degrees with a mix of some sun and cloud. But hopefully more sun will start to peek out from those clouds throughout the day tomorrow. And now showing off one of your photo submissions. Thank you to everyone that submitted some beautiful weather photos to our Facebook page. You can continue to do so and I will use them throughout my week on my weather segments and next week whenever you get some beautiful weather photos. But this one is from Samantha. So thank you. This is a gorgeous shot. You know, you got some, you got a beautiful sun sunset there you got some gorgeous colors in the skies I love these kind of photos but that's all I got for now we'll have more news coming up after the break After hosting and winning the Saskatchewan High School's Athletic Association 3A Basketball Regionals, the Unity High School Warrior boys and girls were off to provincials this past weekend. Yeah. 
The Warriors took the two-hour trip to Arthur for the 3A Provincials. The team's model for the season has been making history, as Unity has not won a banner since the 2005 season and has never won gold. Yeah, we're trying to make history out here, you know, get the first gold medal hoopla banner in the school. So it's been a pretty good year, you know, we've uh, done quite well at uh, the tournaments we went to and hoping to have that banner at the end of the year. The Unity boys team would end up losing in the provincial final, walking away with silver, while the girls took home bronze. Now is that time where we take a look at your pet pictures. You have all week to submit your pictures to our Facebook page for your chance to win a pet pet gift card on Friday. see your pets. Send photos of your pet and their name to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to have them featured on Pet of the Day. Your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the Pet Pad. Welcome back, everybody. We're joined once again with Becca Lawrence from the Lloyd Minster and District SPCA. Becca, how's everything going this week? <laughs> oh, not too bad. Just hanging out with some pooches right now. <laughs> I see that. So let's just go ahead and introduce our, our pet of the week here. So this is Tigger, yeah. as you told me off camera. And Tigger seems like yeah. a very energetic, he's so excited <laughs> to be on TV. It's his first yeah. big break and, and he wants in front of the camera. So let's let him get his time and you can chat about him a little bit. And yeah, we'll, we'll introduce him to the community. Yeah, so this handsome fella here is Tigger. So he came to us from around the Loon Lake area. And uh, yeah, so he he's actually a quite chill dog. Like even being outside right now, he's kind of just would rather go inside. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's we'll just focus in on him here a little bit. Yeah, so we, we just sent him out for his neuter last week and he was in foster for a little bit. He was flipping around. And uh, yeah, so our foster held on to him for a couple of days because we were a little bit on the full side of things. And he just came back to the shelter this weekend. So now he's just for, for sure ready to get into that forever home of his. Let's move on to the next thing, Becca, which is let's do a recap of your event this last weekend, which was the Collector Con. It was the first time you guys were involved in it and the first time it's really happened in the city. And yeah. of course, it was in conjunction with the Family Expo. So I'll just give you a minute here to just kind of tell people how that all went. Yeah, it went really well. So I was kind of hanging out in the silent auction area. So that was a lot of fun chatting with people, showing off all of the auction items. And then, you know, the, the store itself, you know, they brought basically their entire store <laughs> and everything in it. And uh, they did really well too. Babs Gaming and Sports Cards did really, really well. And I think all of it in general, like there was a, a wide variety of vendors there. You know, we've seen Pampered Chef and you know, other like Adventureverse was there as well too. So it was really a wide range of things. And the Family Expo had a lot of stuff going on too. Bouncy houses, there was different little shows on. I heard there was baby crawling races and I wish I would have wow, seen that. Wow, that, <laughs> yeah, that is an event. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I mean, it, it, sound, it was a great weekend overall. And uh, yeah, like, you know, they're looking forward to if we can join in on them again next year, we absolutely will. Or, or bad seeming sports cards will, and we will too if they were invited. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was, overall, it was a really great weekend. Well, that's really good to hear, Becca. I'm I'm really sad because I couldn't make it. I was out of town all weekend, but I was watching on uh, Facebook and Instagram and stuff and so many posts. There was so much cool stuff there, things I wasn't expecting, video games and hobby stuff. And like, yeah, <laughs> it was it was super cool. So next year, I'm going to make sure to mark it on my calendar and I'm going to ensure that I'm there for all those events. And yeah. uh, so you guys have another one coming up. We chatted about it a little bit last week, but it, it's official now. It's on the go. The, uh, Spiro's yeah. Pizza event that you guys are working on together. It's a little collaboration between you two. So just real quick, I'll let you kind of remind people again if they weren't, you know, if they didn't see last week's episode or, or what have you, just kind of what's going on with that. Yeah, so Spiro's, they put on this fundraiser, their pizza fundraiser for different uh, community members here in the border city. 
and uh, you know they they picked us this month so uh, you can basically just go to their website and they have like a fundraising tab that you can select and you can order whatever kind of pizza that you like you can make your own all your fixings that you prefer and the best part is it's Spiro's pizza so it's delicious and we get proceeds the five dollar proceeds from every pizza and yeah and then basically from what I've heard we've had quite a few orders come in already so we're quite happy with that and uh, yeah so I believe it's the 21st of April is the pickup time and April 7th is the cutoff time so you have until the 7th to get your pizza order in there you go. So you guys have, uh, you know, lots of notice right now. You can start planning your pizza parties around this, you know, get uh, get that all set. Start uh, messaging your friends, organizing it, because it's, it's going to be great. Obviously, like we said before, Spiro's is a great local restaurant. They do lots of, you know, charity events and things like that to help out organizations like the SPCA. So to, you know, be able to help out the SPCA and get pizza is a, a great combination there. So so that's uh, unfortunately really all the time we have for today, Becca, but real quick, I just want to ask, is there anything specific that the SPCA is in need of, uh, you know, now that we're coming into the spring season, you know, is there any, you know, kitten food or blankets or, or anything like that that you guys are specifically looking for? Yeah, you know, basically we're kind of getting prepared, like, you know, even though we've kind of just had kittens all year round, which is really weird for us, but, uh, you know, we anticipate that May, oh my goodness that uh, May might be, you know, pretty crazy for our kitten season. So we're getting ready for that. So any kitten dry food, wet food, we're definitely stocking up on as much as we can. Uh, you know, as, as always, we're going through it probably just as fast as it's coming in, but that's fine. And, uh, but yeah, you know, blankets, towels, laundry detergent, things like that, like dish, water, like dish um, soap. <laughs> that's something that we go through a lot as well. So any household type items like that, we can definitely use. There you go, everybody. So just a few items that, you know, if you happen to be out and you see them, maybe you want to pick up a little extra and drop it off at the SPCA or maybe even just a monetary donation, which is always appreciated because money buys basically anything. Beautiful. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for this week, but I really want to thank you for stopping by, Becca. I want to thank Tigger for taking a little bit out of his playtime to say hi. Yeah. So we appreciate you guys stopping by and we'll speak with you again next week. Yes, for sure. We'll see you next week. Project is sponsored by the Pet Pad. For total pet care, think Pet Pad. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloyd Minster. us today for primetime local news is Russell Harold and we are speaking on the Adam Harold Legacy Foundation that is now accepting applications for its 2022-2023 hockey and leadership development program. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Well we're glad we're able to be able to speak with you. Now can we start off with you telling us a bit more about the Adam Harold Legacy Foundation and what exactly it all is just for people that may be unaware. Uh, well, the, the foundation was created after the Humble Bronco bus crash. My son was a, a member of the Humble Broncos, and he perished in the crash. And uh, uh, it, some of Adam's co coaches and and uh, and other leaders in our community, you know, kind of came forward and said, uh, you know, you need to do something to to remember the, the kind of person that Adam was and and what he had to give back to the community. So they took it upon, you know, they were kind of a, a little bit of the push in the in the starting days of the foundation to, to get us going. And what we what we try to do is active, actively develop today's youth of Saskatchewan to create tomorrow's leaders. Because Adam was a very good leader in everything. And we, we try to just promote to kids that you don't have to be the most popular kid in your class, the best athlete, so on. Everyone can be a leader in their own right. And have you and your family been seeing some strong support and been seeing some good response since starting up the foundation? Uh, it, it's been it's very well uh, received. We've we've been to a number of locations. We've, we've done 10, uh, 10 different communities across the Saskatchewan. So, and we are uh, rural based. We try to keep it to uh, rural if we can because uh, you know Adam came from a rural community, and we know I mean, he he was able to to do a lot of the things. Uh, we were able to help them to, to go to a lot of extra stuff, but there is kids out there that either by, uh, you know, the, their parents can't maybe 
drive to uh, take them somewhere because of work or, or what have you, or finances. We just wanted to offer something in their own community and, and just kind of expose them to, you know, things to make them a better leader in their community, make them possibly a better hockey player, you know, to show them some other skills. And uh, we try to keep that, like I say, to rural kids. Uh, you know, the, the city kids, a lot of them, it's at least available. If you know, I'm not saying that they all financially maybe can do it, but they do have the, the you know, the availability of the facilities and the training and so on. Well, that's really great to hear. Now, what can kids and families expect when joining this program and everything that you have to offer? Um, so it's a three day, uh, we, we do three days in a community. So we'll come for a full weekend in the fall. And then we come up, we come back for a single day in the new year. And so like uh, a basic example of a, of a camp would be day one uh, on ice, we'd have power skating off ice. We would do a leadership class class. And then in the afternoon, we do a on ice skill session with our instructors and off ice, we would do off ice fitness. And then the off ice fitness, they talk about, um, uh, you know, showing kids things that they can do at home with, with just everyday, uh, things that they've got around home using their own body weight and so on to work out that they don't need a fancy gym. You know, there is things they can keep active, keep fit at home, you know, and talk about nutrition, that sort of thing. And uh, we do have a coach's hot seat that day at noon. We, uh, we, the local coaches sit in with our, our own coaches and uh, you know, they bounce ideas off them because we do have a lot of, you know, very well um, traveled coaches and very, you know, they've played professionally and coached professionally, so on. So they have something to offer to the, to the local coaches as well. And then day two, uh, we'd have an on ice skill session again, and then uh, off ice, we'd have team building. And then we'd finish in the afternoon with an on ice skill session and small area games. So that's, that's your first weekend. It's a pretty busy weekend. The kids are pretty active. There's lots going on. And then day, so then day three or the first day coming back in the new year, we would do again, an on ice skill session. We do an off ice leadership session in the morning. And in that leadership, leadership session, we'd ask the kids to uh, bring back, we ask them to do at least 10 hours of min minimum of volunteer labor, or not labor, but volunteer in their community. And we, uh, we get them to bring that back. And we, we talk about what they did to volunteer in the community, how it made them feel, so on. And then uh, the afternoon on ice would be skill sessions and a fun scrimmage and team building as well in the afternoon off ice. So it's, it's three pretty full days for the kids and, and the parents are welcome to sit in on the leadership class on, on any of it. They can sit on any of it. And it's been really, really well received. Like the, the leadership side of it and the team building has, um, is, is a very big part of the camp. And we do get a lot of great feedback that it's, it's not a hockey school by any means. It, it offers so much like it's, you know, we will bring, you know, some camps we may bring as many as nine or ten instructors, different instructors to that to that uh, location for the weekend. So there's there's lot lot to offer. Now, for families in those communities that are interested and they want to check this out, where can they find more information online, and where can they all apply? Okay, so the the applications are are not individually wise. So it, it's it's uh, unfortunately like a, a single uh, kid or a, or a family wouldn't be able to apply that way. What we encourage is communities to apply. Because it's it's something where we want the community to be involved, so uh, applications are open till the eighth of April. Uh, they can go online to the Adam Harold Legacy Foundation .ca, and they can read about uh, you know kind of what what we what we require for a community. You know we, you know we obviously need the facilities that sort of thing, and uh, they can put in their application. And then so they they apply, and then we you know obviously we get more applications than we can go to. We shortlisted and and pick three of our recipients for next year's camps. Perfect, Russell. Well, once again, thank you so much for giving us your time today and being able to speak with us on this foundation. It's really beautiful to see that you and your family are able to continue Adam's legacy through this and help out kids and families in those rural communities. Is there anything else you want to add that I may have missed out on? Uh, one thing I guess I should add, Shelby, is uh, there is no cost for the camps. Uh, it's on a pay it forward basis. So if we do come to a community and they feel strongly that they would like to donate to the foundation, we, uh, we, we suggest that the kids are an active part of, of that donation and they take you know, an active role in their community to do something that might possibly help their community, a community cleanup bee, uh, you know, sell spook insurance, uh, community car wash, uh, you know, pick bottles, what have you, and whatever they chose 
to, or they, they can raise as funds. That's their donation and that's their fee. There's no set amount. You know, and, and some communities, if there is no donation, that's fine. That's why we call it pay it forward. And we, we want these kids to, to learn to do things, you know, for someone else as well. Okay, well, hopefully this helps get the word out there and you'll see a little bit more applications for this year's program. Thanks again so much for speaking with us, Russell. Thank you. Thank you for joining us on Primetime Local News, and you can catch us again in the second hour.